G'day YouTube, my name's Lance. Welcome to Bundy Bear Shed. The weather report. Well, 14 to 22. So um, they reckon it's gonna be showers today. But look, they've been saying that for a few days now. And it was a lovely sunny day yesterday. And um, there's, a, there's a bit of a front coming from the west across. And late last week, they were saying in our area here, we could expect, um, 10 to 70 millimetres in there somewhere so we've been really hoping that we get a bit of it because um, the place is drying out like the orchard is in need of some water um, you know need a you know the, the citrus trees and that need a bit of a drink and um, yeah rather than use the tank water on the shed here I've been hoping to get a you know an inch of rain 20 mil or something like that but um, we've been pumping from the dam up into the high tank and Judy's been keeping the home fronts going with that and her pet ducks watered and all that sort of thing with that. Um, the pipe over there, I still haven't found, I haven't done any more looking, but um, Jude sort of convinced me that we didn't come up that far yet. She reckons we, we stopped before then. Um, but anyway, and she's probably right because I can't seem to find the damn thing. But um, the, um, <laughs> so, a little bit of rain, if, if we do get a bit across, it won't be too bad. The, um, it'll be noisy on the shed if it's, you know, today's Monday filming day. And um, I did get a bit done through the week in, in, the, in the shed here with, um, with, you know, just snippets filmed and things like that. But um, hopefully it's not too bad. With the microphones, I can probably drain a lot of it out. We'll, we'll just see how we go with it all. Um, End of financial year came and went. <laughs> um, the world didn't end. Um, another tax bill coming, no doubt. And um, yeah, business increased. Look, we didn't increase a lot. Um, for the amount that we turn over, maybe 1%, maybe. Yeah, it's not a lot. But um, in this day and age, in this economic climate where everyone's feeling the pinch a bit and interest rates are going up and yeah, just everything's going up. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's good that it can just expand that little bit. So we, we are grateful for that. And um, there's a little bit of gravy there by the look of it. So the tax man will have his eye out on that. <laughs> you, can, you can bet on that, but anyway. Um, but yeah, all in all, it, it was a good financial year again. So yeah, we gotta we gotta think ourselves lucky. Um, yeah, we, we haven't had any lookers at the business really. And when you think about it, you know, if you're gonna spend you know five six hundred thousand dollars on a business, um, a retail business, to buy something like that in this economic climate, I, I wouldn't be doing it. <laughs> um, because you don't know, you know, we've had highs and lows over the years and you, you just don't know. Um, in Australia at the moment, we've got a, a Labor government, which is normally shit with finances. Um, but anyway, we'll, we'll just see. Um, they seem to be going okay, you know, because of the booms and all that. And the other day they were flapping their gums about um, how they're helping business in Australia. Well, you know what they've done. <laughs> um, in Australia, for those that aren't in Australia, um, Say, I, say I'll give you $100 a week as a wage, and look, in Australia, everyone's on $1,000 a week. It's just how it is. Um, well, in the past, we've been paying, on top of that, we have to pay 9% or something, 10% superannuation. So, um, so to give you $1,000 a week, we got to find an extra 10%, and then we put that into your superannuation fund. So. But for some reason, with the big companies, they include the whole lot, but um, say you're giving someone $32 an hour or something like that, um, they only look at that part. They don't look at the extra 10% that you're putting on top. So, um, so that's another $3.20 an hour, you know, 10%. But so the super has gone up to 10.5% now, so the wage bill's gone higher. And um, the... As from the 1st of July, the government's mandated that every business has to pay every worker um, or the, the minimum wage, it's gone up 5.75%. So um, it's about $75 a week each wage has gone up. So um, 
That sort of doesn't affect us really because we've always paid way above award anyway. Um, we have good people and we like to keep them. Um, all our staff get a pay rise every Christmas and um, yeah, depending on how we've done for the year to how large that is and that's never taken away. But, um, but the reason it's on my mind at the moment is because even though we are above, we, we always pay above award by quite a bit, um, an extra 5% um, is quite a bit, you know, it's 3 and $4 an hour on the basic wage. But, so we've done the sums and even, <coughs> even with bringing that into account, we're still, um, we're still way above. So <laughs> that's all right, that, that's a good thing. So, um, so anyway, we'll see, see how business goes in this next 12 months. And um, yeah, hopefully it just ticks along like normal. It's not too bad. This last week of in the shed here, I've just been working on the 65. Um, I got my Land Cruiser washed. <laughs> um, a few other jobs for Jude and things like that. But look, basically, um, I've just been trying to knuckle away in at the 65 here. Um, the well, I'll cover some of this stuff first. Um, I've got a little care package from Sparex again. Um, they got some emery tape in that now. Um, so, yeah, um, and they they do have a, a good section on their on their website of um, <coughs> pardon me, like consumables and things like that. And, and I'd run out of emery tape, so emery cloth, you know, in the, in the one inch roll. So I'd run out. So I went for a bit of a scrummage through, and I found some. So I got onto them. And 50 metres, that's like a 150 foot roll. Um, so I got two 120 grits. One of them will go up into the um, machine shop, um, you know, just for polishing shafts and things like that. We've got a big roll here, 50 metre roll of 40 grit. Now that's the, that's to get rid of rust and <laughs> that's the big bore stuff. And they also had, I find this stuff handy, em emery cloth sheets. So, um, where are we? Oh, 280 grit, yeah, it's a finer one. And with the 280 grit, I usually, they sell this as single sheets, not as the box like this, but you know, if you just need to polish something up, you just put a bit of that down. It lasts better than the wet and dry. You can just give it a bit of a scrub on the, um, on the bench there. So I'll put that over here out of the way. Um, the, <laughs> on the on the 65 since last weekend, look last weekend the arse end was all assembled. Well now the final drives are off, the diff's out, the um, diff housing's over on the in the service bay over there and um, we'll go for a bit of a walk. And um, My last video I put out was the what was wrong with the lift cover and we found that the you know lift cylinder was buggered and the piston was out and all that well on cleaning out the diff housing i found the rest of the donkey deck and you can see it's had quite a quite a bit of a let's see if i can get the light there quite a bit of a bend there but that was rattling around under the diff you can see the shiny bits where it's been jiggling around on the bottom there <laughs> Just sheer ass that that didn't go through the crown wheel um, and knock out the bottom of the housing or something like that. So <laughs> you've got to get a bit lucky now and then. But <coughs> pardon me. The, um, the idea of it was, well, my, my thinking about just popping that off, and I didn't film pulling the axles off. I thought, well, there's no real need. I'd rather film... Um, putting them on, you know, cover what you need to put on. And it's like this quadrant housing here. Um, I pulled it apart. I haven't filmed pulling it apart, but um, I've been making up little bits and pieces for it. And um, I'll film putting it together and what I like to do putting it together. And, and that'll be a pretty good run, just showing you what to do there. Um, I have got it covered in the rust converter. Now, I started off with the rust converter in the big five litre pot, the brush on stuff. And you can see on the, well, I'll take you for a little walk shortly, um, on the fan shroud that I put some of that on, but it, it just doesn't go on as even. And I like, I personally like these aerosols. So um, 
I've just opened my second one and I'll, look, I'm probably nearly halfway through it. Um, but I got the diff housing and I've taken it out the back. I've stripped it. I've still left a pinion in, um, which it, it's coming out, but I just left it in for some reason. And I've got the PDO out the back and all that sort of thing. So um, what I wanted to do was get the diff housing out, cleaned up, um, get the rust converter on it. So I've needle scaled the whole diff housing, I've sanded it down, I've wire brushed, I've you know, made it as good as it's going to be on the outside and I've rust converted it. Um, the inside I am going to paint it with the Gliptol. Um, in, the, in the diff it's not so bad, but in the gear casing, the, the primer is sort of non-existent. It, it pressure cleaned out. It looked okay, but when I was pressure cleaning it, you could see the water coming out red. So it's going to get that. I've, I'm going to do that for a couple of days. I just haven't, haven't got my shit together um, to do it. But um, the plan is I've, I've tipped one final drive up on the end there and I've pulled the brakes out just to, just to get in my mind how I'm going to film getting it out. So we've got the other one to do yet. So um, one thing... <laughs> One thing on the, on the little T20s, 35s, 135s, all that sort of thing, um, the lower linkage pin that goes in the final drive, when they get loose, they piss oil out everywhere. Yeah, they, they make a big mess. And, and this tractor on the left-hand side, the pin's been loose. And I was thinking, geez, I bloody, it's a wonder that didn't um, leak more oil out. Yeah, you because know, we had plenty of oil in the gearbox, plenty of mud too. God, the bloody shit, I cleaned out of the bottom there. Incredible. I can show you the mess on the ground outside, just from one gearbox, you'd think you cleaned a bulldozer, I reckon. But, um, yeah, then the penny dropped that, yeah, the pin goes into the dry brake housing, so the pin can be loose and you won't leak oil on a 65. So, um, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's, sometimes you, you bug around with this all your life and then the penny doesn't drop till, till you, yeah, till you see something like that. Um, so... I've got the housing stripped out apart from the pinion, I've got the PDO out, I've got the two final drives off, I've got the crown wheel and pinion out. I've got a scarp down my finger here. <laughs> when I was lifting the crown wheel and pinion down, there's little wire ties on the bolts. And of course one of them had to gouge into my finger. And so that's been a bit of a pain. Um, it's starting to heal though, that was early in the week, like Monday. Then, then I've got this fella here. Well. <laughs> Yesterday, I was cleaning some bolts for the radiator shroud. I mean, you would not think you can put a whole day, well, most of a day anyway, quite a bit of it, into setting up a radiator shroud and, and the radiator and all that sort of thing, but that's pretty well what I did yesterday. Um, and I was cleaning one of the bolts on the wire brush and it bit and it grabbed my finger and jammed my finger in down under the wire brush and stalled it, um, stalled the wire brush, so I just had to get it up and spinning backwards get my finger out but yeah on my pad here um, it's taken all the skin off the pad and um, yeah why well, I brushed it off and there's a flap of skin there I'll be right to whiz downtown and um, do a bit of safe cracking or something because I've got no fingerprints left there now so um, yeah I had to have a sit down after that one I thought oh whoa, god that hurt uh, so anyway um, all's well it ends well I suppose um, it wasn't too bad, but um, I, I spent the week after work playing with the drag link um, that goes from the from the steering box up to the front axle, and um, one of my s subscribers commented it'd, it'd be interesting to see how the Sparex tie rods go because there's a bit of bull on the on Facebook about when you go left to right they jam up and. The aftermarket ones aren't any good. Well, uh, look, I've so after he said that, I was oh shit, I better bloody try that out and see. So I've got it all set up. I've got the wheel alignment pretty good, um, as in with no wheels on, just you know both straight ahead position, and and um, I turn it so like say say when you turn left, the left steering stop on the kingpin stops and. Yeah, you can measure at the front that you've got about, say, 8 or 10 mil gap on the other side at the front. And then you can bring it back around. And, and so, look, it's pretty close. It's close enough to give it a run. So I've got the steering box on, which you saw the other day. 
I've got the drag link. Um, you have to actually weld the, um, uh, you actually have to cut the um, ball joint off the radiator end of the drag link and it was a weld in, one, weld in end and Sparex do supply a weld in end for that but Sparex have a, have a, like a, a piece with no thread probably 60 millimetres say long to come up the tube and I thought okay that's alright so I, I measured from the centre of the hull in the tie rod end back 200 millimetres and I put a centre pop mark on the on it so I couldn't lose the mark so when I was buggering around welding and that I could make sure I had it the same length and um, so but because the drag link comes up the side of the radiator it actually goes flat to come up through the panels and the radiator housing there and because it does that at the front you've only got probably three quarters of an inch round so you've got to cut the cut the um, tie rod off the ball joint off um, and you only get to weld so much up the end of it so I die grinded inside and got it up and welded it and made sure it was straight and all that sort of thing so then comes a problem it's, there's an adjustment on the drag link and you, you know, how do you adjust that there's, so I got the book out and I thought what do they say here well they don't say a bloody thing and so I've, um, I've worked out full left full right and I'll uh, there'll be a little video coming up and I'm going to film it straight after the stew on tying up loose ends just explaining a couple of little things like that it's not worth a whole video um, but we'll see the I've taken all the rubbers off the ball joints except the front one up near the radiator no one can see it I'm just leaving it as it is but the other ones I've got the proper umbrella ones and I've been tossing up with when I paint it you know there's there's a lot of a lot of um, talk on Facebook groups about, you know, when they went, you, you painted the radiator hoses and you painted, you know, everything should be painted because that's how the factory did it. And I was, I was going to go that way. And anyway, I just looked at it and then just when you paint a tractor and if you've got the nice new radiator hoses not painted and the tie rod end rubbers not painted, just that little bit of... Um, a little bit of difference just I reckon it makes a job so I've changed my mind I like an old Sheila uh, I've changed my mind and I'm going to paint the ball joints and all that then I'm going to pop them off and put the rubbers on and just just to have that nice contrast so but um, the radiator shroud I've got a little bit of work to do on that yet and another interesting thing and um, Everyone craps on about standard parts. You know, oh, the proper Massey Perkins and parts are, you know, so perfect. And, and um, they're probably right most of the time. But I was setting up that shroud yesterday and I had one fan blade hitting. And it's a genuine fan. It's a proper 65 fan, the one that come with it. Well, one fan blade is about a little over two millimetres longer than the others. And I've sat there with a the tape and I've measured and I've buggered around and I'm thinking, well... That's got to be out of balance to start with. Um, yeah, so I've, I've grounded a little bit to bring it back level with the others, you know, as, as in the gap, because, yeah, just one, I marked it with an X, and just one was longer than the other and just tagging the shroud. But I've gone to great lengths now. I've got a square on the front to make the radiator true and all that sort of stuff. But, we'll, look, we'll cover that shortly, I suppose. Um, I've got a... I got a new top link for the old girl and this is a Sparex of course and this is as close as I can find in the Sparex catalogue to um, being correct as in you know the square here and the, the, the this crimped section here that's just crimped where the thread goes so that's that's your threaded section here all this up here usually doesn't have any thread it's, it's down here and um, so we'll probably tidy this up and you know, get that ready for a paint so it's the same color as the tractor now in the parts book some of them have that square out here um, I don't think the top link m so much but when the, yeah, I'll just jump over here for a second oh. When you have your stabiliser bars, see that was your, 
<coughs> I mean, that was an original stabiliser with the, the... That would be 11 16 squares on it, I suppose. So I'm tossing up with doing that here. Now, there's a heavy-duty linkage and a light-duty linkage. Um, I was going to put everything heavy-duty because that's what you seem to do. You think, oh, make it bloody tough, you know. Then I was thinking later on, I was thinking, oh, you bloody tosser. You bloody, um, you're wanting to cart it around on a tractor, on a trailer. Um, why not go light-duty? It's all, it's all correct as per the parts book, so why don't we just go light with it? And I thought, so that's what's happening. We've, we're going light with the rim, so I'm going to go light with the linkage with all these things. So you can get the big heavy buggers, you know, with one inch threads and that here. But when you look at the book, um, this, is, this is a viable option. It's, it's something, that, um, something that's good to go. But yeah, a lot of the original ones had that little square. And when these jammed up because they got the red dirt in them, you could put the Fergie spanner on there and, and give, it a, give it a bit of a run. <coughs> Pardon me. So, <coughs> so today's exercise. Oh, these um, where are we here? The levers here, the the levers on your quadrant. They have a. So this is just your normal your your lift lever. They usually have a a little screw goes in here. And then on each side of the quadrant, they have a, a little brass washer like that. And some of mine are worn, if I can find one. Some of mine are worn completely, they're paper thin. So um, I've been up the front and when, we, when we're assembling this, we've made nice new brass ones. So it'll have nice new brass washers each side of the quadrant. So that'll be as per it should be. Um, <coughs> the other problem we have here is on the, on the guide to let you know where to put the draft. Now, where would that be, Lance? It should be just sitting here. Here it is. This fella here. So on the... On the normal quadrant, you have this stop, and you can see that that bolt is, it's just got a, you know, a couple of flat sections on it. Well, this fella here, he still has a retainer, but you can see where I've had to cut them out. It's a square one. And I thought, yeah, no worries, it's a UNF bolt. And so I've had every tractor I've got, I even went outside under the awning there, every tractor I got, this is seized solid. So. And they've got actually a peen mark on the end there to stop them rattling out. But I, I have a spare knob here that I, I got off the 35 or 65, one of them. And I thought, yeah, OK, no worries. I'll just run downtown and get a quarter UNF coach bolt. So your coach bolt has got your square there and your square... Your square fits through there like that. But the, the thread in these fellas is UNF. So I trots downtown, right, old buddy, grab a... Can I get a couple of inch by quarter UNF coach bolts, cup heads? And they said, no, not UNF. <laughs> I said, you can't. And they said, no, no, that's not a common thing anymore. Um, there should be a little metric one here too. Um, they said, we got UNC. And I thought, well, I'll, I don't know about UNC, I need UNF. And so I went to the other place and they said, no, no, I got UNC, but no UNF, no fine thread ones. So um, the other place these are used is on the, where the foot plates bolt to the foot treads, the, the, the the cast iron, where the tin goes to the cast iron, they have UNF bolts. And um, yeah, they said, oh, we got metric ones. And I said, well, give me a couple of UNC and a couple of metric and I'll take it home and I'll do a bit of a fiddle and see, um, see if I can work it out. 
But, um, yeah, see, see if I can find anything that would actually do the job. And look, I can't. Um, and when you actually look up, like on eBay and on Amazon and things like that, you look up cuphead bolts. Um, in America, they call them carriage bolts. In Australia, they're coach bolts or cupheads or something like that. Um, yeah, you can get plenty of UNC and plenty of metric. Um, there is UNF available, but you know, I've got to buy a whole box of You've got to buy a lot of them. So um, I'm tossing up at the moment. If that's going to be an ongoing problem, um, you know, with my tractor restorations, I may um, bore this out or tap it out to um, and, and put a helicoil in for UNC. So look, just to make life simple, rather than um, you know, traveling around the world to buy half a dozen of these little bolts. I need one, two, three, four. I actually need five to finish the restoration. So five UNF cuphead bolts. So um, I'm thinking I may, I may just helicoil like I said. I've, look, I've not made my mind up yet. We'll, we'll work with that when I get to it. Um, they can go in any time. So, but look, that's about it um, for excitement for one week. <laughs> um, his bloody finger giving me the shits. <laughs> um, yeah, you can't wash anything properly. It's, oh, it's just a pain in the bum. But anyway, that's just how it is. Um, but look, I'll, I'll go handheld now and I'll just give the stew a quick walk around on what I'm up to with the tractor. Um, but then I'll, I'll still film a bit of, a, um, a bit of a, um, an odds and ends for, for the playlist, just so people can see how it is. Um, I am getting a bit keen on pulling all that battery tray out, but I've come to a stage on the fan shroud where I think there's supposed to be a captive nut on the fan shroud and where the tank sits and all that, but I've, I'm not sure. Um, I know, well, I'm bloody sure it's got to be a captive nut, but I've got to sit the, the little brackets and all that rubbish up there just to work out exactly what it is. So that'll happen this morning probably as well. So, so I'm hoping to film this today. Um, I have got a video in the can of, of pulling the rock shaft apart roughly, um, that'll come out this week. Um, the bits and pieces, doing the bits and pieces up, I've got little snippets of videos of them, but what I'm trying to do is get everything ready here and then we'll put a video of just assembling it. And I thought I would have had that done by now, but you know, just, I don't know what happens in Bundy Bear Shed. <laughs> the wheels fall off sometimes, we'll see. But look, thanks for dropping by. Um, I'll stop flapping my gums, I'll get that camera in the hand and I'll go for a bit of a walk and I'll just show you what I've been up to and the messes I've made. Okay, this is, um, this is the drag link end that I've got welded on there and the wheels are pretty well straight ahead. I put a little centre pop mark just there 200 mil back from the center there. So um, with the cutting and welding and all that, if I got a bit lost to where I was, that would sort it out. You can see a couple of little lines here, there. And what that's about is I used the timing cover line there as a, as a marker. So I turned it full right as far as it could go. I put a Nico mark there, sharpie mark. I turned it left as far as I could go, I put another sharpie mark, then I measured between and put a halfway mark and lined that up with the edge of the timing cover. And that way I knew I had my straight ahead position. So then, coming to the back end here, it has an adjustment here um, on the adjustment length. So with my trusty With my trusty vice grips here, I worked out the centre point of the steering box, and geez, that just misses the just misses the radiator shroud there. So, yeah, I worked out the halfway position on the steering box, and so I put this at half this at halfway and that gave me a measurement for here so I screwed that up um, you can see all the copper the anti-seize in there 
and I've, li I've nipped that up now with the with the flat there nice and straight this is a bit long I reckon so I'll probably come in and take that thread off so it's only sticking out say two threads you can see where I've shortened all the nuts on the tie rod ends this one here is long too I'll probably leave that as that's sort of hidden away but <clears throat> all the tie rod ends are in um, not that you can see and see this is another long one where are we there that's another long one so I'll probably pull that back a little bit but I do have it all set up underneath there and I can go full left full right there's no binding at all um, I'm happy with that something you may or may not find interesting is the breather hose here it's got this funny little hose that comes down down to the breather tube there no aftermarket company seemed to make it and so I got the Massey Ferguson number and I rang the local Massey Ferguson dealer and they said no longer available so <coughs> pardon me so no longer available so I'm yet to make a little thing there I've I've sort of got it in my head how I'm going to do it. Now, the fan shroud, what I've been doing with the radiator here is I've been off that flat housing there. Doesn't want to stay there because I've got the camera in my hand now. But yeah, on that flat housing there, I've been measuring through from the radiator core to the top and radiator core to the bottom to make sure we're true with the radiator because I can't imagine X factory the radiator was sitting back on an angle or anything like that. I've still got to put the put the screws in for the shroud. I've just got a couple in to hold it in place. But the interesting thing is, <clears throat> and I'm, I'm not sure how or why, is the gap that I have in the fan here, that one with an X is the one I've shortened, that was the longer one. Um, this bracket here, this bracket there has to have a spacer under it. To hold the radiator true and to have the proper gap there, if I bolt that back down so that this bracket is right down on the casting, this comes back and the fan shroud hits. <coughs> I mean, so with the radiator square, and the shroud sitting there like it is so you have an even gap all around the radiator um, the little spacer I'll, so I've got a couple of washers packing it up as yet but um, yeah it's just <laughs> oh just all these things you, you seem to run into and this bracket here yeah, that bracket there I fabricated that completely from scratch that's a brand newie. So you have to get it around the radiator hose and all that. So the radiators are remarkably rigid. But I've got a little bit of rust here and a little bit of rust there. And I'm, look, I'm, I'm probably just going to cut across and cut that out. I think it'll be fine. Um, there's a threaded hole here, which looks to be 5 16th UNF. And there's another one here. This looks a little bit bigger, like the outside of that hole looks a bit bigger than that. So I'm going to find the little bracket, the tank bracket and all that that goes here. Work out what has to go there. And if we need to have a captive nut, we'll be making a captive nut. <coughs> what I mean, the, um, you can see on the shroud there, I, I brushed some rust converter on it and there was a little bit of moisture there still, so it looks a bit shitty, a bit rusty, but it will get, um, this will get another sandblast yet. Once it's done, once I know it's right, and it can just bolt on there, um, yeah, that'll be okay. But apart from that, not much else has happened up here. You, but oh, I spent most of the day yesterday, I had a bit of a break in the middle. Um, to watch landline and that but yeah most of the day on the radiator and the shroud and fabricating brackets and trying to line everything up but if we come for a walk <coughs> pardon me we come for a walk I've got all the new brake parts here 
here ready so we can do you know riveting brake linings on we've got a new bonded brake disc here but i thought where's the fun in that um we might as well rivet some on and when we come over here that's where the tractor used to be what a mess <laughs> um, but yeah that's just how we had to had to do it um i've got the crown wheel the crown wheel carrier sitting there it's waiting for new bearings the brakes i pulled the brakes apart um just to have a look on that side to work out how we'd film doing it all um obviously the seals are leaking from either the diff or the axle housing so there's a big mess to clean up in there um yeah it's just and this other final drive it's still sitting on the floor here i'll come away a bit so you can see the full de part of path of destruction so that's the mess on the floor at the moment so what the plan is is to get the transmission housing bolted to the tractor over there and then we can start building a tractor so yeah once i can get that on we're good um I did look at doing the hydraulic pump up, but um, at the moment, to do everything I want to do on a pump, um, Sparex have got a lot of the parts in the country, but there's some they haven't, and it'd be quite a weight, so we're just going to pop a new pump in this one. We may keep the pump and do that up just as a, just as a side job. But yeah, hopefully today I've got to clean that up. I've got the PDO just laying where I pulled it out there. Um, there's a new PDA shaft going in because the spline's quite worn. Then when we come over here, <coughs> this is where it looks like the bomb went off. See the difference, this is a mercury vapor light and see the difference in the light. We've just gone to the yellow light, which all my old videos had yellow lights. <coughs> but there's your diff housing. Um, yeah, we've got it. We've got it all clean. Not that you can see any bloody thing in these lights, but anyway, we'll just see how that goes. Um, I'll open the back door a little bit, and that might give us a bit of natural light. This morning, when I come up the shed, it was dark, so. Yeah, but that might give us some natural light. So you can see the housing, it's all done. The, I've got the old drawbar off and all that sort of thing. That's the drawbar there. It's a homemade one, big heavy thing. I do like having a drawbar on them to tie them down to the trailer. Um, I haven't made my mind up yet what we're doing here. I have been thinking of um narrowing this one up a little bit you know running down through maybe um i do have out the back here one off the 188 the big heavy a full swinging draw bar off the 188 but look you know we're just getting heavier and heavier so i don't know i haven't made my mind up there yet we'll we'll work that out but you can see there now how the how inside the gearbox there the primer's not there anymore so the pinion's got you can see it's slopping around the bearings the bearings crook but the gears from what i can see at this stage look okay there's a little bruise just there which might have been something to do with their failure but that's not gonna worry anything it doesn't look like there's any hardening gone or anything like that so we should get away with that and these holes here look a bit rusty inside, so we'll be, I don't know, we'll be running a drill, doing something through there, just to make sure. And where these studs came out, they're all gonna be loctited in, and we've gotta run, um, yeah, run UNF. That's half, half UNF, these. So, looks like this one's half hanging out anyway. Um, yeah, so they gotta have die nuts run down them, and, all the threads cleaned yet and things like that so so that's what we've been getting up to this is that's all the shit outside there that's why i just wash everything out the back here and out of the way but i didn't think it'd make such a mess <laughs> um, 
So we've got a bit of a mess there and all the floors bloody filthy. Just from cleaning and needle scaling and all that. So I've got a bit of cleaning up to do there as well. Um, in the parts washer, that's the hydraulic pump. Um, yeah, but like I say, I think I may pull this relief valve out and see if that's jammed shut. That may have been the cause of our problems. Um, but anyway, I've got the diff lock soaking. That's a that's your diff lock mechanism. Um, these are your brake shafts, you know, where you work your brakes. So they're all in over here for a for a bath and a free up and a tidy up. And that's your PDO gear. That's looking pretty good. So these little pegs. They had these skinny pegs like that up to serial number 680 odd thousand, I think. And then they went to the so the fat ones, these must have been breaking off and they went they went fat to about 5.8 round here and the holes were bigger. But the 35s had these skinny ones, the 65s, on this hole here, they went bigger. So anyway, there you go. That's a week in Bundy Bear's shed. Just a quick little snippet here. I went and got this bracket and it looks like both of those should be um, 5 16th UNF, so I have to make up a nut, a captive nut for over there and tack him in. Then this should sit on the thermostat housing there. But it's got this funny bend and you can see where she's had a bit of a bougie there. So I think this fuel, coal start fuel reservoir should be sitting straight up and down. They are in every other tractor. so. I'm thinking I'll pop this nut off here and I'll massage this. Now I know the radiator's right and it's sitting good, I'll have to massage this bracket. Massage is a technical term for beat shit out of it. Um, <laughs> I'll have to try and straighten that up so it slides down over this nicely with no tension on it, it just sits there and supports everything. And yeah, hopefully this re reservoir, I'm bloody sure that should be straight up and down and even if I bring it, bring it so it sits down like that a little bit, <coughs> I believe this here should come out straight and then there should be a bit of a wiggle and a jiggle, so that'll probably take another day the way I'm going, <laughs> see how we go. Well, that looks a bit better. You can look through there, it's pretty straight. I've straightened this little bracket out and that should sit. Yeah, it's, it's, it's almost vertical. I could probably tune that up a little bit yet. This, I've got this bolt hole in here. Now this one, when I feel up in under there, This needs to come down just a little, so it needs a little twist to bring that end down. This side's okay, it just needs a bit of a bit of a tune up there. And that's sitting there okay, so. But yeah, that's, that's about right. I, I do need to sand that now. It's got a few marks. I think they might have forgot to put this bolt on and just bend it out of the way. I'm just not sure. But anyway, that'll help. I'll have to go up to the lathe and make a couple of... In, instead of just welding a 5 16th UNF nut at the back, you need to have them quite a bit bigger so you can have a shoulder to pull through and weld it from the back. So, so yeah, I'll have to do that on the lathe. But I think I could probably pull that, pull that shroud off now. Um, yeah, have a bit of a tidy up with it and yeah, we'll just see how we go from there. So far, so good. Boy, you can fiddle around with this stuff. And yeah, that there. I think if this comes down a little bit, we have a bit of a twist here somewhere. Bring that down a little bit so that's vertical. And that'll probably bring this in line with the, with the hole properly. 
Well, there you go. I better, <laughs> I better get in and go and put that, um, put that quadrant together.